Wow, guys, welcome back to another video. Man. By the way, uh, this is a new camera. Um, this is the A6400. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if it sucks, if it's good, if it's garbage. Uh, this, it's a kit lens, guys. It's a kit lens, so it can be fantastic. Hopefully, I'm in focus. I think I'm in focus. At least the box is tracking me. But anyways, uh, what, what are we going to talk about today's video? Today's video is going to be about foldable phones. Foldable phones. What do I think about foldable phones? What do you think about foldable phones? Are you going to buy a foldable phone? Are you going to buy the Samsung Fold? Are you going to buy the Huawei Mate X? I think is what they're calling it. Whatever their foldable phone is, it's going to cost $2,600. Are you going to allow China to spy on you for $2,600? I don't know. I don't know, man. I might. I already use a Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Although that only cost me eight hundred dollars, so they can spy away for <laughs> they can spy away for eight hundred. I don't know about two thousand six hundred though. So here's where we're at with foldable phones. Um, we knew it was coming. We've seen the leaks. Technology usually hits a point where there's nothing else to improve on. There's nothing else to captivate with. There's nothing else to stir the techie masses and make you go, "Wow, that's a must-have device." Smartphones has pretty much reached that point. Um, if it hasn't reached it already, it's definitely um, on its way there. I think it's already reached it. Um, what do you do if you're a smartphone manufacturer that makes your smartphone stand out? What do you do that makes you have to buy the next smartphone? You can continue to reduce the bezels. You can continue to improve the cameras. You can continue to make the metal back railing signs and colors cool and fancy. But at the end of the day, with smartphones getting more expensive and those features only being updates, not necessarily upgrades, what do you do? You know, you reach a plateau, look at Apple. What do you do? Uh, you reach a plateau, look at Samsung. I mean, their S10 and S10 Plus, they look pretty cool. Uh, but you know, are they truly must have? Not necessarily. Um, so here come the foldables, right? Wow. So foldables, what is a smartphone foldable or fold? Basically the sole purpose, the excitement behind getting a foldable phone is the fact that you can take something that's super big and then make it smaller and then bigger and then smaller, right? So you take a big sheet of paper. It's big, it takes up a lot of space. You fold it, suddenly you can put it in your pocket. You get the point. So that's where technology is going. We're starting to see that somewhat applied to your smart TVs, um, the way they're starting to bend. That's not new, that's been going around for several years now. The screens on smartphones have been bending for a couple years now. Obviously that's not new. But now you, if you go to CES and you look at the upcoming tech, you see screens that come out of tubes and you see screens that fold into tubes and you see screens that fold and panels and all this good stuff. So where are we with smartphone foldables? I think we're about two to three years away from truly having a super well-built foldable phone that offers all of the conveniences of a really good smartphone or great smartphone and then really, really good, if not great, functionality of a tablet. I think that these first generation, second generation devices are going to literally be trial units. That's why they're super expensive. They're hoping that a lot of people buy it. If they don't have a lot of people buying it, it's okay because they're priced so expensively that that money hopefully is gonna get funneled right back in into the research and development team and then you suddenly have a better second generation, right? Now, I don't have $2,000 to spend on a foldable phone as a, hey, I hope I hope I like it. Hey, I hope this actually serves a purpose because there's no purpose that it's going to be serving. Phones used to be small. Well, back in the day, they used to be huge, right? The ones with the big antenna, you slap it on your face. They used to be massive. Then they got smaller. Then they started to flip or slide. 
It was all about how much more can you fit in a smaller form factor. And then suddenly, we wanted a bigger phone. So again, instead of how much can you fit in a smaller form factor in terms of does it flip or does it slide, it was how can we reduce bezels. And for probably the past five to 10 years, we've been slowly but surely reducing the bezels on our smartphones to the point where now, where do we put the fingerprint scanner or sensor? Where do we put the punch outs and the cutouts? Do we have notches or no notches? That's where we're at right now. So naturally we have to take something that's gonna fold and bend because it's gonna be big when we want it and small when we need it or vice versa. Uh, point here is that it's gonna be at least two to three years before we see perfection there or even longer. I think Samsung's fold device what we've seen so far, no really hands-on, uh, looks a little chunky in my opinion. Um, if you saw my recap video, I kind of expressed that. It looks chunky. Um, it looks a little rushed, honestly. I think Huawei's uh, foldable phone looks much more refined. It's looked like they took a little longer. They went a different approach. They didn't necessarily make it so that it's a perfect square. Um, they cared more about making a bigger phone when it's folded than Samsung. Samsung, when you fold, it's like a 4.6 inch phone. Um, and when you open, it's like a, almost an eight inch tablet. And uh, Huawei went with a six point something inch phone. And then when you unfold it, um, it's an eight inch tablet or a little bit bigger than that. So uh, two different approaches um, to try to accomplish the same thing. The point here being it's super expensive. We don't know if it's necessarily gonna solve an issue. There's no issue right now. Um, but if you're a tech geek, if you love technology, if you have money that's burning a hole in your pocket, um, buy it. Share with the world exactly how you think about it, feel about it, and then damn it, I will buy one once I have the money to buy one. Um, but right now, that Huawei's version looks so much better. Samsung's okay. We've seen some TCL renderings. We've also seen some TCL actual hardware. However, they weren't allowed... Um, to be played with by the media, um, which by the way, I think is super interesting that these companies have these devices, but yet they're too scared and too concerned to let people play with it and touch it at this point. Why? Why do you think that is? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think it's because we still don't know how the software is going to work or is it more a hardware concern? Honestly, I think it's more a software concern. I really do because the hardware right now is as good as it can be Hardware is going to be improved upon, but software, if the software on a device isn't there, even if the hardware is bad, we've seen this with Android phones over the years, where honestly, for example, you look at Google, it's taken Google a very long time to get to a Pixel that we actually enjoy and appreciate, and most of us will still complain about the Pixel phone and the way it looks, but the hardware has always been an issue, but the software has always been the something that said, you know what, if you can look past the way it looks, you'll enjoy the way it functions. Software on a foldable phone is everything. Is it going to lag? Is it going to stutter? Are the apps going to cater to a more mobile experience or are they gonna cater more to a more uh, like tablet focus experience? Those are two different things. Um, my concern is that that's going to, create an issue where, for example, you look at Google with their Pixel books and their Slate tablets where they quite haven't figured out if the app is going to work well for a big screen or if it's gonna focus and become small um, as like an app would on a smartphone. My concern is that that same issue or with Samsung, for example, what they've done with Dex, where they've taken apps and then those same apps expand across a desktop screen and monitor. Um, it doesn't always scale appropriately. It doesn't always work as well. And it sometimes lags. And sometimes that experience, if it's not there, then that kills the excitement and the vibe. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the foldable era that we're going into? Are you excited about foldable smartphones? I am, but there's still a lot there that needs to be answered and shown. And obviously with time, they will. Let me know what things you aren't excited about. Let's not focus on the price point. Focus exactly on fun fundamentals, functionality, looks, design, who is it for? What is it trying to solve? What is it trying to answer? I think right now, foldable smartphones are something that we're not ready for. There's no need for them. They're trying to provide an answer for a problem that doesn't exist.
That's the way I see it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get this conversation going. And like always, stay geeky. It was Nando. Peace, salute, and adios.